Hazing has been an unspoken component of the American educational experience. For well over a century now, in fraternities, sororities, in high schools, in colleges, clubs, and athletic organizations, hazing has been seen as a rite of passage, with underclassmen suffering humiliation, and sometimes worse, at the hands of upperclassmen. But recently, hazing has taken a sinister turn. What once was considered kids being kids is now considered a crime. Here in University City, most people will tell you they know someone who's been involved in some type of hazing, whether it's in a sorority, a fraternity, sports, you name it. And one renowned expert we talked to says hazing is nothing new. It's been around for centuries. It's just that we're hearing so much more about it. If we were reporting it 30, 40, 50 years ago, the way we do now in the age of social media and 24-7 cable and all other kinds of media outlets, it would still be criminal. It's the same stuff. It's not different. It's just that now we're talking about it more like bullying. Charles Williams, or Dr. Chuck, is a professor at Lincoln University who travels around the country talking about bullying and hazing. He's not surprised by two recent explosive events where two local high schools canceled their football seasons. At Sayerville in New Jersey, seven players face criminal charges for sexual assault during hazing rituals. At Central Bucks West in Pennsylvania, same kind of accusations, no criminal charges, but all coaches were suspended. Dr. Chuck says it's sadly not just athletes. People falsely assume that it's just the football team or the basketball team. Uh, it can, it's the track team. It's the debate club. It's the chess club. It, it's the choir. It's the band. Whenever you see kids coming together, so I'll endure this humiliating secretive process as a way of saying, you know what, that's how badly I want to belong. Last year, Alfred University did a major study on hazing and college athletes, and they found that 79% of athletes experience some form of hazing. But get this, only 60% of those athletes say they would ever talk about it. So if it's hard for college kids to report it, imagine how difficult it is for high school kids. Yes, I'm bullying you in the bathroom. Yes, I'm hazing you, you know, in the band room. But you don't tell anybody if you want to be cool and you want to fit in and you want to belong. If you tell someone you're not cool, you're not going to fit in and you're not going to belong. Dr. Chuck says our society is just starting to talk about hazing out in the open. He'd like to see every college campus in the country hold seminars and lectures for college freshmen so that they know exactly what they should do if they're ever involved in hazing. Reporting from Philadelphia, I'm Ellen Kaloje for MeTV. We now continue our conversation on hazing with Dr. Stuart Green, who is the director of the New Jersey Coalition for Bullying Awareness and Prevention, and Paul Shelley, who is the uh, director of communications for New Jersey State Colleges and Universities. I should also say that Dr. Green is with the Overlook Family Medicine Group. Thank you both for being here today. Uh, extremely important topic and especially it's especially relevant in the news right now. I know it's been going on for a long time. I know it will continue for a long time, but there certainly seems to be a focus on the story because of what happened in Sayreville. I, I think people look at Sayreville and believe, okay, that's, that's not hazing, that's a criminal act. You would probably say it's both. It's definitely hazing. Uh, criminal acts are one means uh, by which hazing occurs. But whatever the level of violence is, and whether it rises to be a criminal act or not, uh, it's still hazing, and that's really the problem. Uh, and Sayreville is, uh, uh, is uh, uncommon in only one way, which is that the superintendent of the school district took unprecedented action by canceling the entire season and really treating this with the importance that it deserves. Because those same acts, including of sexual penetration, uh, criminal acts uh, uh, as a means of hazing, have occurred and are occurring uh, uh, in other places in the country as well. I googled hazing, mm -hmm. and I was stunned at how many current cases there are and stories there are across the country from West Virginia to North Carolina to Indiana to Seattle. It, it is still a problem and almost all of those stories were at colleges and universities. Almost all of those stories were, um, were, were current and happening in fraternities. So how do you deal with that? I think the whole issue is, is reporting that, that students may feel more free to report incidents of hazing. Uh, and other kinds of harassment that occur on campus. I mean, th 
the, uh, the leadership from the top sets the tone for what the expectations are at the institution, but there's always students who have, have problems, who will, who will, uh, who will you know. I get it, with all due respect, yeah. I, I think yeah. I hear what you're saying, it almost sounds like you're passing the buck. It, it almost sounds like you're not taking responsibility, you're saying, we're gonna lay out a policy early on and then it's up to the students to tell us what's going on. Well, I think policy is important. I think uh, expectations that are set by college leaders are important, and uh, th there's practices that can be that? done. Then who enforces that? Uh, it's often uh, college disciplinary councils. It's college administrators. So when these issues arise, the campuses will deal with them. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong in saying the students. Obviously, you want the students to come forward. I don't think it's wrong. You want, you want a whistleblower. You want someone with the courage to come forward. But there's such peer pressure on kids to not come forward. They, they feel that they could be ostracized. Don't you need an adult looking over that at all times, especially since you know it's pervasive and you know it could be happening at certain institutions? And you may, you may have that. I'm I mean, just trying to get to that answer. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are residents directors at each of the campuses to, that, that oversee residents' lives, life, ex, uh, set expectations for students and address violations when they take place. And they're trained to look specifically for this? They're trained to look for hazing in these particular institutions? Yes, they are. Okay. I mean, they're professional they belong to professional organizations that, that make them aware of that, this, this issue. Uh, sexual harassment is another, uh, another whole area that College officials need Let's to just know stay with about. Hazing for but now. yeah, but and you, and you're there, there's a huge problem with having most of the adults involved with supervising mm -hmm. and running organizations at the college level and below it in high school and other places as well, understanding what hazing is and that it's not only things that rise to the level of criminality, but it's all degrading, humiliating, psychologically or physically harmful behavior that in the case of hazing has to do with membership or initiation, belonging or status in an organization. Uh, it goes much wider than just uh, criminal acts, as, as in uh, apparently the Sayreville case. Yeah. It's much wider than that. Our institutions are aware of these problems. We're we feel we're addressing them. Uh, that doesn't mean something couldn't happen in the future, but I think but we'll, your policies we'll be may looking not be perfect now. So what Dr. Green was telling you, may you're still growing, and everybody's kind of still dealing with this as you build your own policies. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. That fair to say. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Well, thank you very much, sir, okay, for coming you. in. All I, right. I really appreciate it. Dr. Green, sure, thank, thank you. Thank you. Let me, it's uh, Dr. Stuart Green, the director of the New Jersey Coalition for Bullying Awareness and Prevention, also with the Overlook Family Medicine Group, and Paul Shelley, director of communications for the New Jersey State Colleges and Universities. That was wonderful. I really appreciate you coming in. I think a lot of people <laughs> learned a little bit more about hazing. When we come back, is the lottery fixed? If not, how do the same people keep winning over and over again? And the feds are cracking down on illegal fishing off the coast of our area. That's next on And Another Thing.